217 BC, Hannibal has invaded Italy with a wealth of soldiers at his back. Veterans, mercenaries and fresh troops ready to make a name for themselves now stand ready on the battlefield. Standing in their way, Scipio Africanus with a freshly levied force numbering 6,000 men. His plan? Letting Hannibal go no further and ending the invasion right now. Even though his army may be fresh, it contains a handful of veterans ready to keep the men in check and hold the goddamn line. To battle! Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to another epic online battle. Today I am playing Havoc on the Ancient Empires mod for Total War Attila and we are kind of doing a famous showdown between Hannibal and Scipio. We're not trying to kind of recreate any other like historical battle or anything like that. It's just kind of like a custom battle where we throw these two generals against each other and see who comes out on top. I'm playing as the Carthaginians and Havoc is playing as the Romans on this really really cool like Italian hillside map where all the farms are and like the rain's pouring down. It looks really really cool, you kind of got like a valley and then these two hills to fight over and yeah it's just a really interesting battlefield. Uh, definitely definitely uh, another awesome Attila map, there are so many really cool Attila maps which we just don't really see too often because they're all just scattered around the, you know, the massive map of Attila. And, you know, you find these gems. I don't actually know what it's called, so hopefully it will show at the end. So, you know, if you want to find this battle, I don't actually know because Havoc picked it. Uh, but maybe he'll, he'll say on his video. So let's jump straight into the army comps on my front line. I, ha <coughs> I have five units of these slingers, and I am still a little bit ill, as you can just hear there. So uh, I do apologize for that. So yeah, on my front line I have five units of slingers, they're extremely strong at, uh, at long range combat, so, you know, Havoc is playing as the Romans, and they only have, I believe, skirmishers at this point in history, so, you know, he's going to be getting outranged, definitely, that will allow me to force him to come to me, which will be really, really nice. Then on my front line, I have like six or seven of these Punic uh, Punic levies. Yeah, Punic levies. These are not the best infantry in the world, but I wanted to create some uh, a unit that will actually, you know, go toe to toe with Havoc's infantry because obviously he's not playing with the legionaries or anything like that. So I didn't want to go super OP and just get my most elite units. So we got these Punic levies to kind of be a bit more historically accurate, and you know they're not the best in the world, but they'll definitely hold their own against the Romans for sure, especially in pike phalanx as well. Pike Phalanx will give them, uh, you know, they're just the needed buffs to, to boost up their stats, which is cool. So that's going to be making up my, my main line in the valley. Then behind that, I have these Golic Mercenaries, or these Celtic Warband Mercenaries. These are going to be my main sword infantry, so I'm going to need to use these guys as, as like a shock infantry to, to scare Havoc's infantry back. And just resupply any of my line which starts to break. Um, any of this, you know, any of these soldiers that fall back, I'm going to need to reinforce. Then I have Hannibal himself over here uh, with his very nice uh, imported uh, imported model looking very, very cool. And I, think, I believe he has a couple of abilities as well extra than the normal general. Then on my left flank, I have my most elite uh, sacred band over here. These guys are, are of the late period, so it's maybe a bit cheeky of me actually bringing these. But these guys are actually just extremely good. So I did bring, I think, two or three of these guys, and they're going to be situated on my left flank to go ahead and just push up on this hill and hold it and kind of prevent Havoc from really doing any damage up there. Then behind that, I have some of my mercenary Ligarian, I think that's how you pronounce it, Warband, probably not. So these are my Spanish sword infantry. You know, but the thing about the... the uh, Carthaginians is they don't have a lot of sword infantry of their own, they just have a ton of, you know, elite hoplites and spearmen and stuff like that. So you kind of use the, like, that's what I like about ancient empires, they kind of show the, the, kind of lacking in the Carthaginian roster by having these mercenaries, which obviously Carthage was, were famous for. Then for my cavalry over here, I have this sacred band cavalry, just super elite horsemen, and they should just destroy the Roman cavalry, because, you know, this is pre marian reforms and they really can't stand up against it. Then on my right flank, you can see I have two units of the Skirmisher Cav. These uh, Tarantines are going to be hitting and then running. Then I have some of my Sacred Band, just a normal period. So these guys are a little bit less light armoured and probably more fitting of this time period me and Havoc are playing. Then supporting them, I have, I think, three more units of these Mercenary Celtic Warband. Again, just in case Havoc tries to push any uh, spears up here, I have my swords to deal with them, which will be nice. Then finally, I have my Mercenary Celtic Cavalry, which make up the rest of my right flank. Then if we look at Havoc's flank, he's kind of split his army into three sections. Um, and actually speaking to Batelius a lot at the Mod Awards, I feel like next time I play Ancient Empires, I'll be much more... 
much more efficient because the way uh, Ancient Empires kind of runs its combat system is extremely different to the to Total War battles normally. You really have to kind of uh, consolidate your forces into a big bulk, at least from my understanding of it. You need to kind of just consolidate your forces and units will rout. That's a, that's a given. You're not, not going to have units on your front line who just hold for the entire battle because they're going to get tired and they're going to retreat back. So you just need to have units to, to refill in that gap and then kind of when your unit comes back from routing from a front line, you kind of just move it back into your, your reserve line or your secondary line uh, whilst your front line is fighting. So, you, you know, I feel like from now on, I'm going to be playing a much more dense formation instead of having all my units really spread out, you know, like we've, like we've done here. We've got two sides over the hills and then a main central line. Just so, you know, it gives my men time to be re like get reserved and, and reinforced and stuff like that. So, on Havoc's far left flank, he has these Velites, obviously a skirmishing force, because I don't believe the Romans at this time period actually get any archers or anything like that. Then, uh, on his far left flank, he has two units of these Astarte. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, two units of Astarte, two units of Principes, and then a unit of Tiarii. So, Havoc's definitely gone for that type of uh, formation I was talking about. You know, he's got his front line, he's got his reserve line, or his secondary line. And then he has his, uh, you know, his final third reserve line. You know, these guys will just push in. And the really cool thing is as well that, you know, the Tiaria only ever kneeled in battle. I think that's, um, that's like, you know, a historical fact that the, the Tiaria never stood up, you know, whilst they were waiting to go into battle so that they would never get tired. And that's really cool that they kind of shown it like this. Then for Havoc's Cavalry, sorry, this has been a really long intro. I'll try speed for it. Then on Havoc's far left flank, he has four units of these Equites. He also has two units of the Skirmisher Cav, which are going to be a pain in my ass for sure. Then when we look on his main line, he's another two units of Skirmishers, three units of uh, Pastati, two units of Principes, and a unit of Tiarii. Again, kneeling down, which is really, really cool. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess he's probably gone for the exact same formation. Then far back, he's got another two units of Tiarii ready to reinforce wherever he needs to. Obviously, he has Scipio back here. Can we see Scipio? I assume that's him right there looking very epic. You know, probably trying to cover himself from the rain. Then if we look on the far right flank, he has uh, two units of Velites. He's kind of gone for a very similar, you know, standard army throughout his entire force, which is cool. Looks very awesome. Two units or three units of Starty, two units of Principes. And then another unit of Tiarii. And then finally for his cavalry force on this right flank. Which we can click play so the battle can get underway a little bit quicker. Then he has two units of Equites or three units of Equites on this right flank. And another two units of the skirmishers. So really my plan for this battle before it gets underway. Because we're going to be marching forward very soon. My plan for this battle was just to take these two hills. And push up my main force in the centre to a decent range. I don't want to overcommit. Because I know I have a range advantage. These singers have, you know, just insane range. They'll pick away. Or they have insane range compared to Havoc's army. Havoc only has, you know, these Velites, which are very close range. They're deadly at close range. But, you know, they ha actually have to get there first. So if I can focus them down with my skirmishes to begin with, that's going to give me a really good advantage. As that looks so sick as my Punic levies just move up through the battlefield. So as you can see, this is kind of my main focus. I want to get kind of on top of the hills on my so my flanks are not like really far forward but i don't want to go too far forward in the valley that i'm just going to get overwhelmed and i think havoc has the same plan he's going to be moving up his forces onto the hill um and then try not to overcommit anywhere else so you know he doesn't get a really lopsided formation but it's going to be hard for havoc to do that because i have an absolute ton of skirmishers i think this battle is actually pretty big as well yeah we have like 11,000 or 12,000 soldiers fighting so you know it's going to be crazy so as you can see, I can already open up. Look how far away I am right now. And I can already open up on his skirmishes. So if I can you know, remove this skirmish component right away and just get them off the battlefield, that's going to give me a huge advantage and allow me to dictate the battle. And that looks really cool. The Velite is having their shields up right now, trying to deflect as many uh, rocks coming in as possible. And there's a lot of them. I have like six units, I think, of these skirmishers. And I've managed just to get into range. I'm pushing my infantry forward so that they uh, give me a bit of protection. And these slingers are just obviously shooting so many shots off. Trying to put the hurt down. And there's going to be racking up casualties. I don't think I've killed too many at the moment. But it is slowly going to be, you know, I've killed five dudes in that unit. I've killed, you know, over, over 12 in that unit. It's definitely going to be racking up kills. And also hurting morale of these units. On the right flank as well, you can see that my spearmen are moving up. We have my sacred band. 
pushing up closer and closer. I don't want to overcommit on this side until my center is really up there. And, you know, he's going to be pushing forward his, his skirmishes, but they're really very much un, unsupported. And I'm going to be using this time, you know, the fact that he is unsupported. I'm going to throw a unit of my cavalry up just to scare him off. And that's going to turn his backs to my slingers. And my slingers are going to have an e even easier job. I, I don't want to overcommit my horses because, you know, in this game, having the, the superior cavalry force is really important. Um, and, you know, if I, if I lose, like, 10 or 15 horses here, that's going to give Havoc the advantage I don't want to do. So I'm just going to continue just, you know, he's not supporting his, his skirmishers. I'm going to continue moving up my dudes, just threatening him back. And then Havoc's going to see this and push up his. But, you know, he's actually going to be losing a ton of these men now. You can see that they're down to 20 there. I'm actually going to route this unit over here just because they've just been receiving so much fire that they're just going to get the hell out of there. Uh, these guys will come back. Oh, no, these guys are actually routed completely. Uh, which is very interesting. Um, so that, that entire phase has just allowed me to remove the skirmishes in the center, which just gives me such a good advantage. I believe on this right flank, we're going to be hitting some action very, very soon if we press K. Yeah, we've actually received some uh, some engagements over here already. My mercenary Celtic cavalry is really good. And something I love about uh, Ancient Empires is the fact that all, all the units have a throwing ability, so it's extremely hard to skirmish units, and that's why you saw it in the center. I didn't want to get too close to Havoc's main infantry line, because if my cavalry got too close, the Hastati would just unleash a, a barrage of hellfire with their Pelum and just slaughter that unit. So I'm going to be trying my best to chase these guys down. Havoc is running away as fast as he can with his skirmisher cav, which is an extremely smart move, because they're only efficient when they're in... Uh, when they're in, you know, skirmishing modes. But I'm actually, I'm actually going to be managed to carry these, carry, uh, capture these guys and actually route them. As they're running away, you know, they've got their rears being exposed. And I'm just going to run them off the battlefield, which was really good. As well as that, I'm going to be running my cavalry into the skirmishers, trying to get them down. But Havoc's going to answer with an epic charge with his equites, hitting into the side of my infantry, which was a really, really smart move. Um, and that's going to kind of just explode the cavalry engagement over here. Everyone's going to commit everything they have on that side. Havoc has a pretty nice formation over here up on the hill. But obviously I have my sacred band over here and my Celtic warriors as well. I'm going to seize this opportunity to throw my sacred band as fast as I can into the cavalry engagement to try and turn it in my favor. If we move over to the right flank, oh, you can see Havoc moving closer and closer. That looks so cool. He's formed attacking Testudo. That looks absolutely amazing. They are receiving some missile fire from my slingers, and he just doesn't have any velites to support him to kind of whittle down my front line before moving in, which is just a real brutal advance. These guys look amazing. If we look up on the right flank, have we engaged quite yet? We haven't. Havoc's going to be pushing in his right flank in a bit more as well to kind of just supplement his flank, because as you can see, he's got a very dense formation, and I've got a much longer one, so... Um, I, kind of a reason for me doing this is because I have Spear Phalanx, so I think my guys are going to be decent at holding. And here we go, the Hastati are moving forward right now. This is just a really cool, uh, really cool battlefield, and I'm going to be doing the exact same. I'm going to be advancing my guys. I think I'm even going to charge them in, because I want to minimize the fact, because if I... Oh, there you go, this the fucking Pelum coming in. Overhead, just absolutely slaughtering. I wanted to close the gap so that these Hastati couldn't throw, but, you know, their Pelum straight away and just demolish my front line so i'm going to be trying to dictate the battle as best i can i think the cavalry engagement is still fully underway yep uh, but luckily i do have some of my sacred band here and the sacred band are going to be perfect for taking care of his cavalry and as we can see the celtic warriors supported by my sacred band are going to be really good i'm trying to use my own sacred band to kind of you know stop any reinforcements coming into the battle and you can see Havoc is trying to commit as many swords as possible because as again you know winning the cavalry engagement just frees up so much maneuverability on the map and really makes it hard especially when we spread out our forces so much in this engagement the front line is just going off Havoc is having to commit because I had a much stronger line Havoc's having to commit a lot of his uh, you know secondary line into this formation his Prinky Pays are having to go in to supplement the, the left and right flank which is absolutely perfect for me because I have more men in the center where Havoc has committed a lot more men on the right flank. So you can even see over here, I believe I have more of my levies up against his Astarte, which, which are fighting brutally. And then now we're going to have this engagement opening up with my Sacred Band. I'm expecting these guys to do extreme... Oh no, these are my uh, Ligurian levies. So where are my... 
Oh, my Sacred Banner, I think we're fighting some cavalry on this left flank, actually. So the Ligurians are going to go in. A few of them have, a, have Pelum in their shields. But they're going to be fighting hard to break this left flank. Because I, I, I'm feeling extremely confident in the centre. I have reinforcements. As you can see, I have my secondary reserve line ready to go in back there with the Slingers as well. Whereas Havoc has had to commit a lot of his infantry in here. He's committed his TRI now, his, his third line. He just has his real kind of general reserve line left now. So he's having to commit these, these soldiers just to defend the centre. Which I am more than happy that he does. Because I still have my secondary line ready to kind of get committed where I need it to be. The flanks are completely erupting now. This right flank has completely exploded. I, and the nice thing is as well that I've managed to use my longer line to really just, you know, fill in these gaps, prevent him from outflanking me and forcing him to spread out his central lines. The cavalry fight, I believe, is starting to turn in my favour. We do have the sacred band up against the, the cavalry as well, which is helping. And then I use my Celtic war band just to commit into any of the reinforcement Astarte, who has tried their best to commit to the fight. So that is definitely going to help me out. But I have actually got a, a unit uh, caught by the Tiari, which is a really smart move by Havoc. Having these Tiari cut down the Celtic Warriors is going to you know, fit out my cavalry. But as you can see, my Sacred Band have enveloped the cavalry fight on this side. And that's going to be turning the tide and actually winning it for me in the right flank. So this cavalry is now going to be able to run down the rest of the infantry. I believe Havoc is actually throwing in his Velites as well, which is kind of funny. The, the Sacred Band should be having a field day here and slaughtering them. No remorse whatsoever. If we go back to the front line as well, you can see if we press K as well, that the front line is very much going in my favor. Havoc's infantry lines are getting a bit exhausted, which is extremely good for me because I, as you guys know, have a reserve line. I'm going to be winning on this right flank. You know, he had Velotes trying to support him, uh, which just wasn't good enough. And, the, you know, the Celtic Warriors are going to be able to push forward and win the day as more of the soldiers push in and try their best to, to reform and uh, fill in the gaps. And again, the Punic Levy is doing really well. I, I'm super surprised. I, I can't imagine. I feel like it's going to be extremely hard as Rome, you know, pre-Marian reforms to really, you know, turn the tide of uh, the, the battle against the Carthaginians. It's going to be difficult, but I'm looking forward to the challenge in the campaign when it does come out. Because I was speaking to Petelius a lot at the Mod Awards, and he was telling me all these awesome, awesome features which are going to be in the campaign. And I'm just super excited and can't wait. Um, it's going to be amazing. But obviously, you know, we, we shouldn't pressure him to get them get the campaign released. It's going to be done when it's done. And, you know, that's going to be the best, you know, best case scenario. That, uh, that you know, we give, give him and the team, you know, enough time to produce this really cool product. But, yeah, there we go. The Sendra has routed and the Havoc just doesn't have any soldiers to reform this gap. So my men are going to be allowed to pursue them. Pushing in my Celtic swords allowed me just to put up a, a huge amount of pressure and just overwhelm the central line. I believe I'm using my cavalry now. I have some sacred band horses which have managed to get around the flank and charge into the back of these Astarte. And they're just going to be no match for these warriors. And they're going to get the hell out of there. I believe, yeah, you can see they've routed properly as well, so they're not even falling back because they don't have any troops to kind of fill in this gap. So then they get chased down. You can see the slingers going overhead, whittling down any Romans trying to escape. We will not allow any Romans out of this battle. The Celtic warriors managed to get around the flank of this engagement, hitting the, the Principes and the Starty hard. And this, by the looks of it, is going to be a, a pretty, pyri uh, pretty uh, not Pyrrhic victory, but an extremely you know, wealthy victory for the Carthaginians. Our superior soldiers, our veteranized infantry are just too much for this newbie, uh, well, I guess newbie is the wrong word, but this fresh uh, Roman army. The cavalry is cleaning up on the right flank now. I think we are just completely just running down the Hastati, which still remain. The sacred band horses are cutting them down. We have some missile coming in right now. You can see this, you know, how the flanks have just completely broken. I have some Punic levies coming into the back of these TRI. Now, the TRI are going to be pretty decent at fighting while surrounded. But the fact that, you know, they don't have much support then they're just going to be struggling here. If they had like other units and the rest of the line was, was you know, holding, these TRI would be much more inclined to, to not route straight away. But because the rest of the army's routing, you know, it's, it's creating this mass route feel. 
you know, these units aren't going to stick around if the entire army's routing, you know, but if the entire army was holding the line, then these guys, even if they were surrounded, would be much more likely to actually actually stand and fight. So there you go, it was a decisive victory by me. I think, you know, maybe taking a few of these, you know, more elite sacred band, uh, where are they up here? Yeah, taking the more elite sacred band, maybe uh, I shouldn't have done that because it really just turned the tide of battle in my favor. And my cavalry was just really good during this battle. You know, even, even uh, some of this, uh, I think, early Sacred Band cavalry getting 131 kills, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, the actual losses in the battle weren't bad for me whatsoever. But also weren't really bad with, with Havoc either. You know, he only lost 2,000 men out, so he lost a third of his army here. Which is something I really like as well. Because, you know, like in the campaign, you know, it's, it just feels so much more historical. You know, you're not going to get an entire your army entirely wiped during one battle. Uh, you know, a lot of these units are going to run back and run away. And you're going to have to have multiple battles to wipe out an army. Which is something I, I really, really like. You're going to have to chase it down and, you know, pursue the army and, and just wipe out exactly. Because, you know, maybe losing a third of third of the army is kind of, you know, that sounds a lot more, a lot more correct than you're having your entire army wiped. Obviously, you're going to have battles, you know, like Kanae and stuff like that, um, where one side just gets absolutely destroyed. Um, but, you know, it's really cool. So, the rest of my army, the Punic Levies did amazing against the Starty and the Principes. I, was, I didn't expect these guys to do as well as they did. You can see how many men they lost as well. It was absolutely nothing. Um, on Havoc's side, his Tiari I did pretty good, getting 30 kills on a few of them. Uh, but this wasn't a match. Um, I feel like maybe it could have been a bit different if he had a much more dense formation. But I completely understand why he had to put men on them hills. He couldn't give them up because um, he'd just be getting hill charges down on, down on him. And it wouldn't be too good. My, my Celtic Warriors did really good as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. Make sure to drop a like and a comment if you did. And I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.